also like to thank everyone for coming along tonight, uh, and especially like to thank our speakers, Ian Wally, Richard Bagley, Neil Smith, and Matthew Pierre. Um, this week, tonight, we're launching the East of Eden project. Um, I'm going to start off, I'm going to be on the head of the Department of Architecture and Landscape. Um, I'm going to start off and explain a little bit about how the project came to be about, how I happened to think up the name, and then a little bit more about how the kind of department, what the department's role in it, um, and also, and then, you know, what happened to the objectives are. Um, then each of the speakers is going to give a short presentation, um, and then I think we're going to end the evening with an open discussion where hopefully you can get involved as well. Um, so obviously for us, the move to Greenwich, the move to Stockton Street, is probably one of the most significant things that happened to the Department of Architecture and Landscape. And it seems really important to me that as well, that we're moving here and we're getting a huge amount out of being here. And I felt it was important that we should try and give something back to the local context. And also make links, because I think one of the things about the University of Greenwich generally is that it doesn't really try to make links and connections with people in the local area. And I think the whole the whole idea of, the, of being here is an important aspect of, of being good neighbours. Um, so I'm going to explain a little bit about how we how we met. This is a year or just about a year ago. We met up. Neil Spiller and I met up with um, Ian Woolley and Richard Bagley. Um, and this is a picture of Richard where we met him. Uh, it's been a tough year. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but the, the intro, the, the, I remember when Neil and I got the first um, email, and I think both of us thought, well, we were a bit skeptical, but we agreed to meet Richard and Neil. And after several kind of to and fro, we met on a very rainy Monday morning where we arranged to meet by the West Gate and it was four it down. We ended up in uh, the cafe QM in Queen Mary. Um, and the meeting went brilliantly well. It was really interesting meeting, largely because Richard and Ian are incredibly knowledgeable and passionate about this area. And, want, and, and their kind of enthusiasm for looking at this area kind of really kind of came across to us. And the other thing is they're just really, really lovely intelligent people as well. And that was really important in the meeting. We, we met several times after that. Um, the whole idea of something where, where the various parts of the, the, the department can feed back into East Greenwich. So there's a kind of rough aerial view of East Greenwich. And of course it has some really kind of interesting aspects to it. Uh, previously a very kind of heavily industrialised area. Um, its relationship to the river is perhaps not exploited enough, and, but actually now that the new development is springing up, perhaps it's being over-exploited. There are kind of issues about the streetscape, issues about the kind of the, the use of Trafalgar Road as a kind of wrap run to the the A2, and, and we felt that this, this, there were several parts of the department that could kind of contribute to this. Not the landscape and some of the, the postgraduate programs, but again, we were thinking of it as being quite a limited and quite a particular sort of um, series of projects. Shortly after that, we were approached by uh, Steve Howard, who is one of the, uh, who's on the kind of call of the university, and he's also the CEO, is the CEO? Of, of Peabody. And so we went to Peabody's office and they said, well, we've just taken control of, of Thamesmead. And of course, Thamesmead is one of those incredibly emotive and powerful kind of 
uh, areas of post-war kind of British architecture, very, very kind of important area, has huge kind of cultural connections. And again, the idea was perhaps we might get involved in some way, look at some projects there, because of course this whole corridor is under the southeast London corridor is under a massive transformation with the sort of uh, infrastructure of things like uh, crossrail going to going to Tennessee. So again, this seemed like a very, very kind of good opportunity. So now we've got sort of two areas. So we're thinking, well actually we can maybe run this across the whole of postgraduate in architecture and landscape. And then in around June, one of our external examiners, the architect uh, John Lyle, introduced us to Neil Smith from Night Dragon. And Nine Dragon had just kind of acquired an interest in the, the Greenwich Peninsula. And again, the kind of conversation developed would we be interested in doing some sort of a, something using these kinds of sites? So we've now got three sites. They're all within the kind of quite close uh, proximity to the university. The introductions and the people that we might be working with represent local residents, represent huge international developers, and also people who kind of sit somewhere in between those. And it also kind of raises a whole series of issues about how and why we develop our cities. So it seemed quite kind of clear to me that the, we had with these three sites, and with these three kind of partners, these three sort of stakeholders, the opportunity to do a really kind of interesting piece of design research that engages with these, these um, sites. And it became clear that actually this is something that we can set for the whole department, from first year to masters across architecture and landscape. And again, I thought this was really a really a quite interesting, but also quite a unique opportunity. And there's something that would clearly mark our arrival in Greenwich. I thought it was a wonderful opportunity not to be missed. So I had to give it a name. Every project has to have a name. I started off with the name Blatant Localism, which was the name of uh, an EP released in 1981 by skate core uh, thrash band called JFA, which of course all of you will know stands for J.B. Foster's Army and is a reference to John Hinckley who attempted to assassinate uh, Robert Reagan. Then I thought, no, perhaps this isn't the best name for this project, even though I think localism is a fantastic title and I will use it somewhere. So then we started thinking, I started thinking about East of Eden. All this references the John Steinbeck book, the film starring James Dean, I was a bit of James Dean for when I was a teenager, um, directed by Elliot <coughs> Kazan, time after the book, and also the, the book and the film are sort of based on the story of Cain and Abel, uh, and here we see her. Uh, uh, Peter Bruegel's fantastic kind of depiction of the Cain and Abel story. And actually, the first brief I wrote contained a quote from Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. Um, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. But I think the kind of biblical references, because I think you all realise that. Both the book, the film, and the kind of Cain and story don't end very well, um, unless you think kind of incestuous fratricide is a, is a kind of good point of departure. Um, but of course, what I'm thinking about Eden is this is, is our amazing kind of uh, the old world native college, the Queen's House, the Maritime Museum, because actually, in a way, it does create this kind of moment of perfection. This kind of Edenic, yes, there is a word, Edenic moment in the middle of South East London. And the kind of to the east of that is this kind of chaotic maelstrom. And that's why the kind of name East of Eden sort of um, resonated with me and it stuck um, because I'm getting it hard. 
So what do we want from it? What does, what does the department want it? Well, it gives us the opportunity to develop really interesting design projects. And testing these kinds of design projects against actual science, actual clients, but not necessarily just following their briefs and their ambitions, but perhaps also using a kind of more speculative approach to design to maybe challenge some of those assumptions. Um, I work on the principle that I, I remember being told once that NASA used. Uh, if you have an unsolvable problem, give it to a bunch of 15 year olds who just don't tell it's unsolvable. And I think kind of architectural research can operate in a sort of similar way. Obviously, this also opens up for us as a department of research opportunities to look at the kind of fabric of the city, to look at the way in which new technologies might be deployed to engage in some kind of research with the local community. Because again, these, these, these areas have a fantastic kind of historical importance. Um, something that um, is often overlooked. Um, public and community engagement. Well, I think I'm really pleased to see so many people in the room who clearly are undergraduate or postgraduate students at the University of Brandon Greenwich. Because again, I think the whole point of this building was that it is a public space and to invite people in and to, and to open up a kind of conversation around architectural landscape and around the different ambitions of the city. And, and so, you know, hopefully this project will be the start of something that's much wider and much more long lasting as well. And also to, to kind of give us opportunities for enterprise and consultancy. Um, I'm not sure what they are yet, but again, that's one of the great things about this project. We, it is a, there is a kind of all, an existing sort of teleology. We don't know exactly where we're going. We're going to find out as we go. And hopefully some of the results will be really interesting and exciting. Um, one of the outcomes for this project will be <coughs> public. What we've done well, the outcomes themselves will be public. One of the things that we've already done so far while we're here is try and establish a public presence, locally but also internationally, with the kind of Future Details Conference that we, we launched the academic year with, and also with our kind of Educating Architects exhibition that not only kind of uh, launched the book that Neil and I had edited, uh, featuring schools from all over the world, but also Use the kind of ex exhibition spaces here as a platform to show that Greenwich students can hold their own with the best in the world. And I cannot stress enough the importance of not only being in Greenwich, but being part of Greenwich. One of the other things that we want to do is uh, the, the first date to put in your calendar for when we start to see the fruits of this, this project will be next Easter. Uh, every, for the last three years we've put on our Future Cities uh, conferences. Uh, Neil and I have already booked space in the, in, the, in the galleries for Future Cities 4, which will be centred around the kind of Easter Eden project. Uh, and we've also got you know, international speakers such as Mike Sorkin coming over to give the keynote. Uh, 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 uh. So again, the idea of, of this project is that, that it's going to have a series of kind of public outcomes. Uh, there will also be our end of year show and our end of year catalogue, and hopefully a wider publication that, that brings in all the kind of all the kind of uh, work done by across the whole department, and also most importantly work from people from outside as well, not just the sort of departmental research, but um, I was speaking to someone from the Architectural Foundation a couple of days ago, and there's a really interesting film made by the Architectural Foundation talking to teenagers on Tennessee. That's something that I'd like to kind of bring in as part of this discussion, and I've been in touch with them, and they, they're, they're kind of into to them. But also, have kind of research or contributions from some of the people here tonight. And across the kind of spectrum of, of 
of local constituents, other parts of the university, as well as the Department of Architecture and Landscape. Um, now, this evening, I'm, so I'm nearly finished. You'll be glad to hear. No more, no more bad jokes from me. Um, but I'm. We're going to move. We're going to start in East Greenwich and gradually move east. So we are going to start with Ian and Richard, uh, who are going to tell you about their passion, their interest in, in East Greenwich. Then Neil will be looking at uh, um, the Rock Night Dragon's work on the peninsula, and Matthew will be uh, talking about Peabody and their work in Thames. What will happen after that is that we will have this panel discussion. We've got three chairs. We'll need to set a big chair. And we've got the microphones. So we'll be able to have some kind of open forum. So I'd just like to, again, thank you all for coming. I'm trying to turn the microphones on and hand you over to Richard and Ian.